Hello. Welcome to our fireside chat, where we'll be discussing the various efforts put in place uh, at international and local levels to fight internet shutdowns around the world. My name is Felicia Antonio, Keep It On Campaign Manager at Access Now. And Keep It On, for those of you who may not know, is a global campaign and constitutes a network of over 280 organizations working around the clock to end internet shutdown worldwide. Joining me today for this important and critical discussion is Peggy Hicks, Director of Thematic Engagement, Special Procedures and Rights of Development Division at the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, which is the UN's leading entity on human rights. And Berhan Tai, a senior advisor, internet governance and policy at Internews and a researcher on digital rights. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Berhan. How are you doing? Great. How are you? I'm doing great. Where are you joining us from? I'm in Geneva, where the sun has come out after a rainy afternoon. All right. I'm based in Accra, Ghana. And Berhan, where are you joining us from? I'm joining in from very cold Nairobi, sadly. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm hoping, I hope you're having a great time at Writescon already. Um, for me, this is my third Writescon online. Uh, how many Writescons have both of you participated in? Uh, I think this is my fifth, maybe. I, I, okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. And Peggy? I'm on, I think I'm on four uh, with only one in person. So, you know, looking, looking forward to that someday again. All right, great. Unfortunately, I've, I've not been to anyone in person and I'm hoping to do the same as well in the near future. All right. Um, for, before we go ahead with our session, I just want to um, take a few seconds to announce some housekeeping. Um, this session will last 30 minutes, and it's going to be in conversation with Peggy and Berhan, whom I've already introduced. For our cherished participants who may want to contribute to the discussion, please use the chat button to um, send over your questions. And I promise I will read them and um, give um, our experts some time to respond to them. All right, let's dive into the conversation. And I would like to start with Berhan first. Um, Berhan, you have been very instrumental in the fight to end internet shutdowns globally, um, including working closely with the Keep It On Coalition. What has the journey been like since um, you started doing this work? And what changes have you seen um, to the shutdowns landscape? Um, thanks, Felicia. Uh... So, I mean, the journey has been difficult, uh, right? Like, so just looking at where we are today, just looking at, you know, how the world is structured and in the way that it's functioning right now with all the wars and, you know, the crimes against humanity and the genocide that we're dealing with. Uh, so shutdowns have been, you know, part and parcel of human rights violations these days. So the journey hasn't been, uh, hasn't been fun or has not been rewarding because we're seeing more and more bad things happen. Uh, but the positive things that, you know, if I would really map this journey, I think the fact that, you know, institutions like the UN or, you know, those of those organizations that are, you know, that protect public discourse like CP CPJ and others have recognized shutdowns to be a problem. And the fact that we are even having this conversation with Peggy today is, is, a, is, a, is a testament to, to you know, to collect, to, to our collective work, not just mine, but everybody else that has been working on shutdowns, that shutdowns are real, you know, they're, you know, they're critical for the conversation that we're having and they're critical for, for you know, protecting human rights. Um, you know, and when we really go into the, the, the details of the work, I think for me, um, I, and, you know, my former colleagues at Access Now know how I used to be really stressed when we were about to put out the, the shutdown report every year because I know that if we miss one shutdown that's intentional, that has been used to silence people, to hide egregious human rights violations, it's just, it would seem that we're not recognizing the plight of people. So that was the most difficult part of, uh, you know, I think the journey for me, but also being able to, to find those shutdowns that no one has reported about. Um, and then we can really point our fingers at the government saying, or the, you know, the culprit, whether it's not the government to say that, you know, you shut down the internet. So I think for me, it's a, 
it's a combination of you know very exciting things when you're like yes we're having this conversation this is becoming a real issue now they see it they understand you know why we were really screaming about internet shutdowns but then more shutdowns are happening so i don't know how how effective my work or others work have been um, we haven't won yet so yeah back to you felicia Thank you. And um, indeed, we'll keep fighting. We haven't won yet, but uh, we still are um, equipped to fight um, internet shutdowns. All right, um, Peggy, now, um, as Berhan already mentioned, um, the UN, I want to come to you. So the UN has also been part of this fight and the recipient of numerous appeals and complaints from civil society whenever the internet is shut down. Um, are shutdowns now part of the United Nations agenda? And how is the UN responding to this growing threat to fundamental human rights? Thanks so much, uh, Felicia and Berhan. I, I wanted to start off just with a shout out to, to the two of you, to Access Now, to the Keep It On Coalition. Um, you've asked me, Felicia, about what the UN is doing uh, in this area, but I have to say that it's, it's an area that we have wanted to do more work in for some time. And, and part of that impetus was came from Brett Solomon, who was on the screen right before uh, we came into this, this session, um, who said, this is one of those areas where we need the UN's voice. And so our team at UN Human Rights has really been looking for opportunities to do more in this space. Um, what we've seen is that it's a, it's a call that's been taken up by lots of parts of the UN. So we have the special rapporteurs on freedom of expression and, and privacy that were appointed um, by the Human Rights Council and on uh, freedom of association who've all taken up this issue. We've got human rights treaty bodies who have looked at this um, in their work. And then our high commissioner, the, the leading voice within the UN system on human rights, has really uh, spoken out on these issues through her, her, through her public statements, most recently in Kazakhstan and Sri Lanka. Um, we've also seen a step up because of the engagement of the Secretary General himself on these issues. He's made this an issue in his roadmap for digital cooperation and in his report about sort of the future of multilateralism in the UN, which we call our common agenda. In that report, he specifically calls for us to engage across the UN system on internet shutdowns. So he's given my office a platform to really reach out to and engage with the rest of the UN and say, this is not just something we need to care about, it's something the whole UN needs to care about. And finally, and, and uh, something that we're really excited about, the Human Rights Council asked the High Commissioner to submit, to prepare and submit a report on mapping trends and impact of internet shutdowns. And that report is now done um, and is going to be released uh, later this month. And we're looking forward to, to using that report as a basis to really ratchet up discussion on these issues. Um, thanks, um, Peggy. And to follow up, um, very interesting to hear about the upcoming reports. And so could you um, give us a sense of what is in the reports? Um, what informed this initiative? Um, you already mentioned, but maybe if there are any details you want to provide. And also, could you highlight some of the key findings and recommendations in this report? Great. No, happy to do that. And, and you'll be glad to know there are there are lots of nice citations to the work of the Keep It On Coalition. Um, and, and obviously we're all very dependent on, on that work, which has been so groundbreaking in terms of really bringing attention to these issues. Part of what we tried to do in the report is to really make it clear that of course, internet shutdowns by their very nature restrict human rights. They, um, they undermine our ability to work, our ability to learn, to get healthcare. Um, but they also, of course, block people's ability to participate in the discussions and decisions that shape their lives and uh, that are essential for them to be able to protect their own safety and their own prosperity. Uh, and, and we've tried to place it in that context. This isn't just something that affects a couple of people here and there. It's something that affects whole societies and has that impact. And on that basis, the report's really clear about what needs to happen, and, and that will come as a surprise to the, the listeners, but we call for states to just stop doing this, you know, refrain from internet shutdowns. Um, in particular, we say blanket, blanket shutdowns um, are, are inherently impose unacceptable consequences and simply should never be imposed. 
with regards to other more limited efforts, you know, we're very, we're very clear that when we look at the record, we don't see any occasions really, um, we're almost never have those been done in a way that's compliant with human rights law. Human rights law sets down very clear and substantial limits. Um, and, you know, they can't be indiscriminate, they can't be disproportionate, it has to be the least intrusive measure. And that's just simply not the way states are using uh, shutdowns. So, you know, all in all, we're saying states, stop, don't do this. We also, though, really emphasize that companies, international organizations, development agencies, and civil society, you know, we all need to play our part in, in taking these, these things up. Um, and just two more quick points. We, we emphasize that states also should not ban, block, or criminalize the use of encryption or circumvention tools or particular communication channels such as uh, VPNs. Um, and in fact, should be providing access to those tools. So this is also, you know, end the shutdowns, but also let's make sure that we protect the channels that, that are allowing people to, to continue to have their rights protected in a, in a space where shutdowns are occurring. And then finally, I just want to emphasize, you know, the shutdowns report has to be seen in the context of the evolving digital landscape, which itself poses big challenges for human rights. So some states don't have to resort to shutdowns as frequently because they're already engaged in intensive um, censorship, systematic con content filtering and mass surveillance and, you know, employing troll army armies and cyber attacks and targeted surveillance to, to do their dirty work. So, you know, we, we need to take a, a full scale approach and, and look both at shutdowns and at, and at these other um, ways in which uh, human rights is, are being attacked in the online space. Thank you so much. And I think that um, you've said it all. And indeed, as the Keep It On Coalition, we always say that fighting internet shutdowns um, requires a collective effort. And it's great to see that um, the OACHR is highlighting that in the upcoming reports, and we are looking forward to that. Um, okay, Berhan, um, I know you have some comments, so I want to check with you. Um, Peggy has mentioned um, a few of the highlights of the reports. Um, how feasible are the key points that Peggy mentioned, and how will they impact those that are living um, through internet shutdowns from day to day? And also, how do you see us, that is civil society and the UN, jointly achieving these um, great recommendations or key um, highlights that Peggy just mentioned? Um, no, just first to say congratulations to Peggy and team, because uh, this is, uh, we're very excited that this act actually is going to come out and is going to affect how we do our work and support how we do our work. I think, uh, so we, when I was previously at Access Now, Peter Meisek had a Google Doc where it's called Internet Shutdowns at the UN, where he had like, I don't know how many interventions, like page, page, just where every, like every time Internet Shutdown is mentioned within the UN system, we, that's the way that we used to document how the UN used to engage. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that document is still there, but now this is, Maybe we can just get rid of that document and just to, just use this one because this is a testament to you know the work that we've been doing, but also the UN recognizing this is 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 really critical, but not just for us I think, but for the millions and millions of people that have been affected by this. So for me, I think the fact that this is not just hidden in thirty resolutions is excellent, and you know that you really you're really putting a very holistic approach to it as well. It's not just, you know, governments that shut down the internet don't just sh stop at shutting down the internet, they also surveil, they also force digital IDs, they also censor. So I think that holistic approach is really needed and maybe even in the way that our work should also move um, for forward. I think that's really excellent. For me now, when it comes to, you know, how do we instrumentalize this is, is the key question that I would have. Um, and especially, you know, when we're looking at the UN, how do we in instrumentalize this when we're talking about school exams and UNICEF's works and UNESCO's, right? How do we make this an agenda to them? When we're talking about, you know, businesses, when we're talking about, you know, elevating poverty, because this does, of course, obviously contribute to other forms of human rights violation, right? Like, so how do we make sure that UNDP and UNESCO and UNICEF and other UN institutions are also documenting this, but also understanding this issue to be part and parcel of any human rights related work that they're doing, whether it's development work or human rights. So I think that's going to be really critical. Then now when we're looking at ourselves as civil society, um, for me, one of the things that I always struggle with is like, I, you know, and, and Felicia and the team knows this is like, how do we make, make this 
you know, we need to bring these conversations to where it's happening. Because, right, we need to have this conversation in Ethiopia right now. We need to have this conversation in Sri Lanka. We need to have this conversation in Tajikistan and India. Uh, because a lot of these conversations are happening in Geneva, are happening in places where, you know, these conversations don't really, they don't, like, you're not shutting down the internet anytime soon in Geneva, right? Like, so how do we make sure that this is becoming a sub region or the country issue? And that your offices, I think, Peggy, especially the human rights offices, are documenting these things and, you know, they, they understand shutdowns to be a holistic problem from a human rights point of view. I think that's going to be really important and critical. And them working with the local civil society organizations, the local human rights defenders, you know, the, the sub-regional governments that the regional governments that we have is going to be really critical. So um, I think the first, you know, the first big part is, you know, you guys being able to put out such a holistic document is one, but the next thing is how do we implement this? How do we make sure that this is a health issue? WHO is taking this up when we're talking about the fact that, you know, people in Tigray don't have access to medication and they can't reach out to anyone to say they don't have medication right now because the internet has been completely shut down for over a year. Um, so that's like the, so that's the sort of the implementation is where my head is going. Yeah, um, definitely I agree with you. And actually I had a follow-up question for Peggy um, to kind of give us a sense of how the implementation uh, process would go or would look like and uh, thank you Berhan for starting that but then I will come back to you again Peggy to ask could you let us know how your office and especially your office has access to high level officials from various governments and companies around the world so who can do more and what are some of the avenues um, available to engage with them on these recommendations that you've highlighted yeah, Ber Berhan has helped me out as well because she basically, you know, preloaded some of the key things that we need to do. One of the things that the report emphasizes, and I think is a particularly important aspect of it, is the fact that there are a lot of conversations happening about connectivity, but they somehow don't talk about all these ways in which connectivity is, you know, voluntarily blocked from people who, who actually do have it and, and then it's cut off, right? So one of the things we've emphasized in the report is really engaging in that conversation and bringing that conversation and the people engaged in that conversation into the discussion around internet shutdowns. And you know, in particular, we look at um, you know, how they can do this in terms of you know, the types of aid that they're giving around programs to develop um, uh, digital connection and, and, and uh, connectivity broadly and say that you know, there ought to be some um, basis within that to make sure that once we're connected, there, there, is, there is a constraint on, on how it can be turned off as well. And so that would also sort of raise the profile and engage other people in the conversation. I mean, we look at things like our partner organization, the ITU, that just issued a new connectivity report, which is super important because it really emphasizes the, the need for universal and meaningful connectivity. But in the same time, within that report, they don't talk about shutdowns except in, a, in, in the, the specific context of where disasters have led to disruption, such as what happened in Tonga. So that's the type of thing we need to make uh, happen. It's got to be a whole of house effort um, in addressing uh, shutdowns and making, making sure that, that we're engaging more people in, in, this, in this discussion, as Burhan has said. The, I'd make two other quick points. One is that the issues around transparency um, it's actually two connected points, transparency. And the second point is, is monitoring and reporting. The transparency side is something that we've heard from the Global Network Initiative for years that we need companies and states to do better on the transparency side. So we need states to you know, really feel an obligation to report on what they're doing on internet shutdowns. Um, and, and we also think that companies can do much more in here. And this is something, of course, that ranking digital rights has, has really made clear in their reporting as well. Um, they show that there's room for a lot of um, improvement from telecommunication companies who don't really actively provide information on their practices relating to shutdowns. So we want more transparency um, on, on these issues and that becomes even more important when, as, as Burhan said, we link it into surveillance issues and targeted denials of service that you know, may not be our covert in, in different ways. Um, the, the other thing I 
mentioned was the reporting and monitoring side. Now, I don't want to put uh, Access Now or keep it, uh, keep it on coalition out of business, but we also do think, as you've said, that this is something that the UN itself really needs to be collecting the data on shutdowns and, and reporting on it in a way that you know, has that imprimatur of, of the UN um, looking at the impacts of these issues, both in terms of what's happening and also in terms of their impact across society. So we wanna do more of the type of work that we've been able to do on this report. Amazing. Um, well, okay. <laughs> I, I, I see from where we started, that is from when we started monitoring internet shutdowns and then the Keep It On campaign till now, we've made so much progress, even though internet shutdowns are still happening. I think that we have all collectively made a lot of progress. And so uh, my question or what keeps me at night is, what else can we do to end internet shutdowns? And I'm throwing this to both of you to um, share some thoughts with us. What else can we do um, to end internet shutdowns? Uh, maybe Berhan, you wanna go first? Um, I Surprise, I've never thought about that question. Of course I have, like it's the, it's a, cause you know, I like, I honestly, uh, I, I feel very weird about sanctions because sanctions affect actual individuals and, you know, people, but we need to make it expensive to shut down the internet for, for the individuals that are shutting down the internet, right? Like, so for governments, for businesses, it should not be allowed. If you do it, it becomes, cause it's, the money is what the companies care about, right? Like I think, so make it extremely, extremely expensive for them to, to shut down the internet. If Orange shuts down the internet in Central African Republic, they can be prosecuted in France. That's because that's where they're HQ'd in. If Vodafone does that, they can be litigated in, in, in the UK. Uh, you know, if the Argentinian government, I don't want to mention any other governments here because <laughs> there's, but if the Argentinian government shuts down the internet, put real sanctions on the individuals, not the individuals identified to have ordered the shutdown. I think that's, we just have to make it expensive because people dying because, because of shutdowns is not convincing government. So we have to ask, you know, where does it hurt? And that's where we need to kick. So just jumping in, uh, I, I agree fully with what Berhan said and, and we just sort of, take a, a more UN approach on it, but but it, it, it's like looking at, we need to move the window on this. Right now, you know, there really is just not a full understanding about how dramatic uh, the impacts of these shutdowns are. And there's even a little bit of understanding, or, you know, the sympathy within governments. Oh yeah, you know, they just shut it down around an election. Well, that's actually the worst time to shut it down. That's when people need the internet. So, you know, we, we need to educate, we need to push, we need to pull our allies together, and we need to basically move that window so that, um, as, as Berhan said, the, the cost, be they economic or societal or shame or whatever we want to put on it, you know, it's not a, a cost-free thing to, to take these actions. Um, and I do think we have a lot of tools, and I think we're coming together around these, these issues, and I think you know there there is a role to play uh, for governments who understand these things. You know, being more vocal in what they're saying about shutdowns. I, as you've heard, I'm calling on my UN colleagues to see this as an issue that threatens their goals on on development, on peace and security. And obviously, you know, we work side by side with civil society, who's who's really you know the ones who can really help us document and look at you know what really is the impact of of, of these uh, measures and and. And I think that is compelling evidence about how we can't afford to, in, in any way, to have this continue to happen. Um, I agree with all the points um, you both mentioned. And I, I think that we need to pinch them where they feel it most. And then maybe they will put an end to internet shutdowns. And of course, the impact of shutdowns, as you said, it's, I always say that we cannot quantify um, the impact that internet shutdowns have on people. Um, they are bad in short, and governments must um, refrain from um, imposing them. Um, Berhan, you have the opportunity to be sitting right in front of Peggy, um, who is from the 
UN's most powerful um, institution on human rights. And so I want to give you the chance to leave a message for her to take back with regards to next steps and how we can move forward regarding this conversation. So what would you want to tell her to take back to her office on the issue of internet shutdowns? Um, so obviously I'm, I'm Ethiopian, so I'm, I, I'm sure you know the, the, the really difficult time that, that we're going through. I was talking to a friend of mine this morning just to check on him on how he's doing. Um, and, you know, the con internet connectivity in Tigray has been cut for, and for about 18 months now. Um, and he still doesn't know if his mother is alive or dead. So that's the conversation that we're having, right? Like, because he can't reach her, you know, she needs diabetic medication. There's no medication available. There's no way to get through. So honestly, for 18 months, he doesn't know if his mother is alive or dead. Um, and he just wants to know. And one of the ways to know is to be able to reach out to people, right? Like, so I think for me, it's that that's the core of it. And the reason why the internet is shut down in Ethiopia is to hide egregious human rights violations, crimes against humanity, war crimes. The reason why, you know, in Mariupol, the first things that were targeted was the network was because they wanted to hide egregious human rights violations. In Tajikistan, the same thing. So for me, we need to also really ask what happens when the internet goes off and the people that disappear with the internet. Um, so we've, you know, we've done a lot of the work of making sure that this is a topic that we, we talk about, but really understanding also how people disappear and the impact it has, um, is, it needs to be addressed. And for me, like if I would, if I would give anything to you to take to your office and your team, uh, it's not to say that they don't know this, I think they do, they, they're you know, very close to this issue, but it's to really stress, yeah, people disappear. They never come back when the internet goes off. So what do we do about that? Can I jump in to just, uh, you know, respond to Berhan? I, yeah, I, I, it's, that is exactly what people need to hear, right? And, and, and I, it's our job to figure out a way to get that message to the people that can make a difference on this. And, and I take your point from earlier as well, that too many of these conversations happen in, in you know, the lovely conference rooms here in Geneva, and we need to make sure that they're happening in the places where people are directly affected by these things. And that's part of why I stress this work across the UN, because that's what we can do through that. We can engage the, you know, the UN country teams that exist in these countries and and you know, work with them to figure out what more they can do on these issues as well. That's exactly the type of work we need to do and we're, and we're committed to do going forward. And yeah, absolutely. Not your friend and everybody like them should, should be able to have answers to those questions. And that I guess is the other thing we have to do while we're working on this is that we also have to, the same time we're raising the cost of shutting it down, we also have to do everything we can to make sure that what they're trying to do doesn't work. Right. So the other way we're, we're working on that is that if, if they're doing it because they don't want this, the human rights situation to be known, then it's our job to make sure it doesn't work, that, that we get the, the word out about what the human rights situation is. So, you know, it's not worth shutting the Internet down because it's not working um, in terms of that objective. So we're also very committed to, to making sure that they're not successful um, in blocking that information as well. Thank you so much, both of you. And I think the message we are taking from this conversation is that we are doing a lot of work, but we still have to do more work um, in the fight against internet shutdowns. And so I would like to say a very big thank you to all of you that joined us in this conversation and to ensure that you continue to fight and push back um, against internet shutdowns. I really had a great time chatting with both of you. And I guess our audience did the same. Thank you both for the great work um, you're doing. And let's continue to collaborate in order to stamp out internet shutdowns and their impacts on fundamental human rights. And thank you all for your participation and enjoy the rest of the sessions at Rightstone. Have a great time. Bye. Thank you, Felicia.